We really haven't talked too much about Michael. Do y'all want to discuss her for a little bit and what you think of her? Oh, Michael. Um, she's the main character. Right. <laughs> Uh, she's, uh, the one I'm least interested in. <laughs> I like the actor a whole lot. She's, I, I, I tend to agree with the, uh, as far as I'm less, the least interested in her character right now. She, not to, um... Not to say she's not doing a good job. No, no, she's know. really an actor doing it, performing her role perfectly, but it, it's just... Sorry, sorry. It's well, character. I think that maybe we're a little uncertain about her character because she's uncertain about herself right now. Because at any day she's right. like, I could be going back to prison for life. So she kind of has this weird vibe that kind of yeah. makes her seem that way. I think. Yeah, she is loosening up a little bit. Tilly's helping with that, and and yeah. Ash Tyler, and Ash, yeah. oh, and Coward. <laughs> Budding romance. Mm. Kiss me amongst the spores, will you? <laughs> <laughs> Only I'll tell Alrighty me Alrighty then. <clears throat> I do, however, though, because I am a fan of the Vulcans. You know, mm. I, I do like the Vulcans. And you can't see my Vulcan on my arm right now, but <laughs> she's there. But um, I like the fact that Michael... Post edit. Yeah. <laughs> that uh, Michael was raised with the Vulcans and as a mm. Vulcan, you know. So... I think it's interesting because Spock is obviously alive. Do you? Would you want to see Spock come onto the show? Only if it, uh, as you so mentioned here, if it's played by Zachary Quinto. That's what I was thinking. Like, would you want to see anybody else play him? I know. I, I, um, I can live with somebody else, but I really like to see I'm him. I'm the same way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. He did. He did a very good job with that character. Yeah, he did. And plus, he's Zachary Quinto. <laughs> I mean, come on. Mm. Skylar! <laughs> All heroes! <laughs> I don't know that. So, uh, watch that. What's, what do you figure the, uh, the age difference is between Michael and Spock? Hmm. That's a good question. Because I remember reading at some point, somebody said he was like 100 years old when he was on Enterprise. Right. So, was he... But when they were talking, uh, when they had that flashback episode, and they were talking, you know, both of your children, and how, like, one of them, they wouldn't let her into, uh... Yeah, because one, one was half Vulcan and one was the human so Vulcan. The, so, obviously, at that point, he hadn't gotten to the point where he would get to there. So, it makes it, you know, it's kind of interesting. Well, um, I feel like that they, she'd already been through school, because he... He chose his son over her, and then Spock, of course, turned it down. He mentioned that. He turned it down to go join Starfleet. Yeah. So he's in Starfleet right now. He just, I don't know. Hmm. It's interesting. That was that was my favorite episode, showing her connection to him, to oh, Sarah. Too. It this was is really interesting. Somewhat around the time of uh, the Cage, the original pilot. So you know, because that was set ten years before. Oh yeah, yeah. I've forgotten about oh, that. So yeah. so the Cage is going on right now. So it's possible that if we ever see the Enterprise in this, Spock would be on it with Captain Pike. Hmm. So. That is true. We'll see if that happens. I'm excited to see more Vulcans because I don't think we're getting enough of them yet. No, I, I can't get enough Vulcans. I um, admire... <laughs> I have to, I really do. I want to follow, that's what I want. But uh, the, I admire their logic and because it, that's a hard thing for me. <laughs> to stay on the straight and narrow. Oh, yeah. You know, but their logic to a fault a lot of the times. You it's know. true, it's true. Yeah, and I think a lot of the awkwardness and the we're not sure where Michael's character is going is because, in, pa in part, she was raised by Vulcans. She doesn't know how to express her emotions. and Well, she has emotions, she just doesn't understand them because she was around people who didn't teach her how to deal with those things. Stamets kind of helped her a little bit. Yeah. But it's, it's, it's almost yeah. like every character is kind of helping her a little bit break out of that. Yeah, so. yeah that, that, that's cool. And I'm sure Amanda, you know, the human that uh, Sarek is married to, mm -hmm. you know, I'm sure she tried to instill some, you yeah. know, compassion and things like that. But I think Michael was so, you know, wanted to be who Sarek wanted her to be, yeah. you know. Mm -hmm. She was always trying to make sure she measured up. Yeah, because at the this when she went back in the memories in the scene where she was about to find out if she got in or not, her Amanda had given her a copy of Alice in Wonderland. Oh yeah. Yeah. Do you really think is a big allegory for the show? Yeah. I mean, it Down really is. I mean, I mean, if you, 
if you really watch the read the plot hole and like especially that episode where she's you know running uh, when they were on the other the se was it the, the the second episode no the third episode when they actually made it to discovery and she's having mm -hmm. to like go through all those holes and stuff like that oh, yeah. you know it, it just the, the imagery as opposed to the imagery in Alice in Wonderland there were so many different variables there that were just so similar yeah and I really think they uh, that was really the uh, what the influence for that particular episode was about was truly I mean not yeah it's one thing to like spit out the the the, the 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 words throughout it uh but man it was just like you know watching little things big things you know they get you know oh that's crazy that's yeah amazing. you know I, I i had noticed that that is mm -hmm. that's really cool uh my absolute favorite part of that whole episode is the shh cling on yeah. <laughs> that was so funny right that was the, that was the <laughs> best amount of humor i mean he, he's like come out of that you know until he's like come out of that shadow and he walks out and he's just like shh you shush sh you and then he just but like, man, oh, that guy was cool as shit. <laughs> yeah. The tardigrade <laughs> got his ass. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. it's instant water bear. I love instant water bear. Instant water what? That's what you call it. That's because uh, you know tardigrades uh, are in the ocean now, are in, on Earth. You know the little microscopic beings right, that hang on the right. ocean. They call them water bears. That's that's like their little like you know like a uh, not Lat the tardigrade I guess is like their Latin name or some something like that. But the water bears is like their nickname, I guess. Gotcha. Yeah, I I did read up on the little tiny microorganisms, mm. but they mentioned it in the show, I think. It was like the, that was the closest thing they found to it on Earth. It was yeah. like a million times bigger. Yeah. Had we Big ever, brother. Had we ever seen a what do they call it? A gormagan? Gormagon? The the, the space whale? whale? Space had whale. we ever seen this in any other series? I feel like we have, but I didn't know if it was that. No. They called it that specific. There was thing. the junior episode in on Next Generation, where it attached itself to the hole and like sucked the energy out of it. That was mm -hmm. a different species. They've they've shown other uh, space bearing species, um, but as for like that particular species, I, I don't know. I don't know if they may have mentioned it or something like that. Because you know, I kind of have the same feeling that you're talking about. Uh, because that was the one, that's the creature that Mud came in on, right? Yeah, it was like, mm -hmm. a, he was like a Trojan horse. Uh, he was like hiding his, in was his Poor whale. Yeah. yeah. I know, right? Was his whole ship inside, inside, inside her? Yeah, it was okay, a little bit future ship or something like that. Or alternate dimension ship, where it came yeah, from. Yeah, with that big crystal. Crystal mm -hmm. on it, yeah. That was... I wish we had seen, I, honestly, I kind of really want to see more of that ship. Yeah. I don't know why. I mean, that poor whale, but I still want to see that ship. <laughs> <laughs> Well, were we talking? When we were talking about Lorca. We were talking about him outside, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Did you want to talk about that again <laughs> on camera or not? What his butt? <laughs> well, How great it looks. Well, I'm just waiting for someone for him to hand somebody a book with a sock in it, so they can be free. <laughs> Because uh, wouldn't, wouldn't that be special? That, that would be a brilliant <laughs> back to that. Yeah. I, definitely I, think, I definitely think he's better as a brunette than a blonde. Yeah. He doesn't, he doesn't look quite as washed out. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, the the kind of rugged war captain look goes for him. My interesting thing about this, did y'all notice when they were about to leave the Klingon ship and they told him that they had Admiral Cornwall? Is it Cornwall or Cornwell? Yeah, Cornwell? And the look on his face. What was her name? The, the Admiral that, you know, he slept with. Yeah, he did sleep with her. Cornwell. 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 Yeah. Cornwell. Okay, so with with him and Admiral Cornwell and you know before she went on that mission and she got captured and they she did was the nasty <laughs> yeah but then but they parted on bad terms because she was talking about when she got back she was gonna put him up for review for psychiatric review mm -hmm. and make him step down as captain and get help so do you think she's still gonna keep her promise on that I think we'll see something if, if, I don't know next next uh, next part of the season I think we'll see something about that if they make it back. She looks so familiar. I can't think of her. Liz is the same thing too, but I couldn't think I of what I saw her. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, she does look familiar. But um, I don't know. She... Tell us who she is. I don't know who she is. I can't remember her name. <laughs> no, I'm telling them. Tell us who she is. <laughs> we need to know. She's asking the internet to tell us. Oh yeah, comment below who she is. There we go. Those are the words I was searching for. Got your back. <laughs> I don't know. I think she's been uh, she's been through hell because she uh, got slammed into whatever conduit that was. You oh, know, yeah. the, the hell oh. beat out of her. And she said yeah. she couldn't feel her couldn't legs. Feel her legs. Yeah. yeah. But they were able to fix that when she got back. They said she was gonna make a full recovery. Yeah. Oh. Well, that's good. So, 
my next question is going to kind of bring us into um, our big topic of discussion tonight. Conspiracy theories. My favorite. Let's talk about Ash Tyler. You mean Bach? Right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so how? what have you seen that has convinced you that he's Vogue? What do you think, Molly? The PTSD, definitely, like all the flashbacks and stuff. Right. But he definitely has a connection with, uh, I can't remember her name, the female. Laurel. Yeah, Laurel. Laurel. He definitely has a connection with her. And, I don't know, I'm excited to see what's going to happen. So when he's flashing methods. back, I feel like that he thinks... It was torture, but it really wasn't. It was surgery. Yeah. I think they've implanted. Yeah, he's a sleeper agent. Yeah. Easily. Yeah. He's Some, so she's going to say something or do something to trigger him mm -hmm. at that perfect moment, and he's going to pull it back. Over is going to happen, and he's just going to be a burr. It's like, it's like the CIA calling somebody but, up in the 70s and be like, Orange, I'm going to go kill something. Yeah. Okay, so do you think he'll transform back into being a Klingon, or would he have to go through surgery? That's what I can't reconcile in my I head yet. I think he's the aug I think they implanted him with the augment stuff, but you know I don't think that's. So is Ash person. Tyler even a real person? Yeah, I think he really I was think a real he, person. I think he died on that ship that he was mm -hmm. telling the captain that he came from. You know, or at least captured. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, yeah. In the the Battle of the Binaries. Because yes. you know when you know when, um, what is the, the big head guy the Klingon is it Cole? Cole. 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 Okay, so when Cole. Ban b banished him over to that other ship, and he was there by himself. Mm -hmm. He was reading the crew manifest. Yeah, so, so that probably had all the information about it. So they were able to piece together a story. He broke it in half. I know, but if Ash Tyler was on another ship in that battle, oh, you know, then then he, then they he probably been able to find they'd been out. out there for months sifting through mm -hmm. that wreckage. Yeah, mm -hmm. and so they probably stumbled upon it at some point. You know, yeah. and and. Um, Laurel did say that the matriarchs of her house, you know, they specialized in deceit mm -hmm. and, and, and things like that. Klingon spies. And she mm -hmm. did tell him that he was going to have to give up everything. Mm hmm. Everything. Including his body. Everything. You gave it up to her yeah, party. Well, because times. at the end of the <laughs> episode, right, apparently, when Ooh. he went in there and she was in the jail cell, Mm -hmm. And the way she was looking at him, the only time we've ever seen that look on her face before is when she was looking at when she was looking at Doc. She was in love with him. And she was like, "Don't worry, I'm not going to let them hurt you." I'm like, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. interesting. And then the the scene happened. And you know, her <laughs> original plan of trying to get away with the admiral that was going to be her way to get into the Federation. You have to and go to Discovery. Him. She was very specific. You had to go to Discovery. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And she yeah she was ready to defect. Mm -hmm. Defect. <laughs> If you know what I mean. Yeah. And then, you know, that last scene when um, she was in the cell and, and Ash came in, you know, and basically she said, you know, we'll, our time will come, you know. And that, that, yeah, and, and he, that is, it's, it's, if you don't think it's Vark, then, then you, you, you're not paying attention. And also, if you're an IMDB checker, oh, if, you, if you go to IMDB <laughs> and look up Vark's character, look up Vark's character, it all, the only pictures on there are him and yes, or are in that garb. And this is the only thing he's and credited that's to. Some strange, yeah. some and strange name. Somebody on one of the shows, uh, it, uh, an interview or something like that, said, "Oh yeah, yeah, I've seen him at a party." You know, you know, they mentioned something like that. But that's that's it. That's it. That's yep. all you ever see. Well, um, another thing that someone pointed out was the fact that beginning in episode one, the actor who plays Ash Tyler. His name has been in the credits since season one, but Ash Tyler didn't show up until like mm -hmm. how many episodes in? Five. Five yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They're not as good at sneaky sneaks as they thought. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be interesting. I can't wait to find out. And they and then somebody was interviewing him, and somebody asked him about it if he had met the actor who played Vogue. Mm -hmm. They point blank asked him, and he was just kind of dodged the question and at that moment Jason Isaacs kind of bust into the room and started taking over the conversation. Mm -hmm. It's like, yeah, they're trying to wrap that up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, girl. Sneaky, sneaky. Mm -hmm. I love reading Star Trek rumors on the internet. It's so fun. Well, the rumors are a lot uh, more fun to read than the horrible comments of the no, non-Trekkies. No. The okay. poser. Some of y'all need some foot up your butts. <laughs> <laughs> and how dare a lot you, of you. And how dare you call yourself a turkey to criticize the color of, of the main character or right. small really? nuances like that. And yeah. 
there's amazing. been some um, reinvention in every Star Trek series in some sort of way. You they kind of take liberty with their own because it's their, you know, a new show trying to. It's attract. 2017 I think it's good to have people. Different adaptations like that. Like people got mad about Doctor Who being a woman. I'm like, that who is so cares? Stupid. <laughs> <laughs> who cares? Right. Stupid. Well, the thing about it is, what do you think? Do you hope that they keep it on streaming, or do you hope at some point they transition it over to where everybody can watch it with us? I I, I like it on streaming simply because. We've heard the F word. Yeah. And, you know, yeah. it feels like, you know, HBO Star Trek or something. I just know. feel Game like. Game of Thrones. That, yeah. <laughs> the it's Game of Trek. Game of Trek. I feel like that the further we get into the next half of the season, we might see a little bit more gruesome stuff. Because it even kind of showed, like, Cole with uh, Captain Giorgio's. Yeah, yeah. Badge. Mm -hmm. And just how he knew that it would upset her, like talking about. He's he like, he picked his teeth. teeth. Yeah. yeah, he picked his teeth with it. Oh you yeah. Know? Just like, just showing, like, this is what I think of that. Yeah, I like, I, I like the darkness of it. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's and more, it's more true to war. They, there was, a, there was an episode uh, going back to the episode where they were in prison with Mud and uh, Lorca and Ash. Uh, how he was talking about how they look stupid, and uh, they, they're a lot smarter than they look, basically. Uh, that's been a joke for, you know, 20, 30 years about how Klingons are kind of dumb. Yeah. You know, they're great yeah. warriors, but they're not the smartest peoples. Yeah. You know, because they never talk about any of the science advancements mm -hmm. or anything like right. that ever in the Klingon Empire. You know, and that, I think that was a really great move on their part to show that, you know, just because they look so much different doesn't mean they're dumb. Exactly. You know, just because they're, they're, they're fanatical in some way doesn't mean they're dumb. They're just fanatical. Right. Because there was a fanatical Vulcan. Yeah. That yeah. was that was they tried of, to blow up Ser uh, yeah. Saru. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Not Saru, Ser Sarek. Sarek, yeah. yeah. I think you love Saru. Just because I don't, don't love Saru. They don't like Saru. She's into him. Saru. Mm -hmm. We're like <laughs> we are um, neutral right now. <laughs> We're not friendly yet. <laughs> they're not on speaking terms, but they're on like speaking terms. So. Yeah, not allied yet. We're just so <laughs> neutral. Just neutral. At first it was despised, but it's kind of, you know, gone this way some. It's teetered a little bit. If, if they bring Rom Romulans in, what do you think they'll look like? Do you think they'll look like... Uh, um, I got one thing to say about that. We better not see them. We better see their ships. That's fine. We better not see any actual Romulans, because that will throw Cannon off way out the door. Because we didn't get to see them for the first time until the original series. was ten years from now, so... Yeah. I'm sorry for that little rant. <laughs> <coughs> well, um, are there any other? I know we, you said Andorians earlier. Yeah. Anything else that you would I want to see? Rights. Yeah. I want some arguing going on. Oh yeah. I'd like some. I'd like some Zindi. I'd like to see I, some of the Zindi. That would be. That would be know? cool. I would like to see some Zindi stuff. I mean, even if it's not like a first person, like background characters at least. Yeah. You know? Like if they go to like Earth or something like that and they see it like, you know, because that always happens. It's, you always show some Federation Council meeting or something like that. Yeah. So, you can't see me. so do you have uh, any predictions other than uh, we think that Ash is Vok and he's there to sabotage? Yeah, I, I think I'm starting to get on board with that theory. Do you have any other predictions? I think that we're going to have some kind of showdown between Lorca and Cornwell. Mm -hmm. And I think, what was the other thing that we were talking about earlier? That maybe Lorca is there? from the Mirror Dimension, or Mirror Universe. Yeah, because I he's so, he he's dead set on trying to figure out. But of course, you know, Stamets, of course, can't do it anymore. Mm -hmm. So, that I feel of. like that since he's having these effects, and if Starfleet finds out about it, they're really going to be like, because he already broke the Federation rules about yeah, doing eugenics. Yeah. yeah. So, um, I feel like there's going to be a showdown about that, too, at some point. Yeah. I think there's going to be a love triangle between uh, uh, Ash Tyler and Burnham, and what was her name? Morel. Morel. Yeah. Uh, he's gonna, he's gonna, you think he's going to be yeah. conflicted? Yeah. Well, I, I, I don't know why, but I'm thinking that there, there might be a malfunction getting him back to Klingon, and then maybe she'll go under surgery to become a human. I don't know. Cause hmm. I don't know. That's just what I was thinking. She's a prisoner of the Federation now, so. Yeah. But, you know, when she had that scene with the Admiral, when she was, set, you know, pretending to interrogate her and before that she was going to try to take her to her ship, um, she asked her, she said, um, 
what would what would your federation do with the Klingon prisoner? Yeah. And she said we would, you know, ask you questions, but you would be treated fairly. So she knows that like she's not going to she, be killed, or right. he's going to be killed, or yeah. I think that's why she's so willing to take that risk because she already kind of knows what's going to happen. Well, do you think when it comes back in January that she's going to stick with her story of I'm defecting? I would, sure. I would think so because the admiral was alive and she would remember that conversation. Yeah, she would have to yeah. at least pretend. Yeah, and the admiral knew when Cole walked down the hallway. She knew why she knocked her out, you know, so that they would they yeah. could get away. But she's definitely going to you know, spend some time where she has to at least portray that. Mm -hmm. But uh, after seeing that scene uh, in the brig where he comes in and you know talks to her about that, um, I, re I really think that she's going to at least play it off. And that I, I just wonder what she's like, what her end game is, and that's what's something I haven't been able to, fuck, to figure out. Is like, what 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 is the purpose at that point? Because we know that we, I'm pretty sure the war's over. Like I have a feeling that the war's over, or at least gonna, by the time we come back, I think the war's going to be over somehow. Well, they've killed the Death Ship and yeah. Cole and all yeah, them, and all the people that were, you know, really fueling the war. Right. Yeah, and, because uh, it was it was very obvious obvious when she was on Cole's ship. She was going along with him, but you could. She clearly did not want to be. Like, mm -hmm. it's it's starting to show the cracks of the Klingon houses. Well, she says she wants to unite them. Yeah, and keep them united. You know, but but you know, like they they're also very spiritual. You know, she she saw she was there and witnessed Vok lighting the you know the torch, the torch yeah. and all that. The so, Kalis, beacon of Kalis. Mm. Right. So she she was witnessed all that so she's just trying to support him and stand behind him but i i, I she's don't the understand. brains behind the operation though i mean he 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 wants it he wants to do good right he has the faith yeah but she's got the yeah oomph to back it up mm -hmm. you know Cajones, she's got yeah there we go. yeah and she's got the initiative and yeah that has some something to do with there. <laughs> how they were brought up because if he was brought up as an outcast his bringing up was probably very different from hers oh yeah she's definitely uh poshy yeah for yeah. sure yeah she's posh spice, posh that's spice. One. That's what he's, he's more like sporty you know sporty spice. <laughs> and um, and then once he's been changed who is he now oh he's angry angry <laughs> is there angry is that one angry spice. wait scary there we go. we were talking earlier a minute ago about the, how airing on there and you were really cool with it okay being online mm -hmm. i think that it uh Maybe in the future, as the series starts playing out and it starts getting, you know, people might want to air it on some a TV show as it on gets a some station. And yeah, once it, once it really, you know, gets a few seasons in, maybe they'll 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 air some, you know, the early they'll start at the beginning on some TV shows, and some people that don't have access to that kind of uh, system or the money or whatever could get it to once after they made yeah. their money on these episodes, basically. Yeah, and yeah. they can always bleep stuff out. I mean, yeah, that, editing's um, easy. Well, and, and, and get to a wider audience, like you said, for the people who mm -hmm. don't have access to it or can't pay mm -hmm. for it, or right, yeah, somebody that's still using rabbit ears or the digital box now. Yeah, because there are yeah. there are people that still use that. That's true. Yeah, and you know there are people who've been Trekkies for you know sixty years that you know some of them don't know how to use that stuff. Right. right. Exactly. Sure. I mean, we, we we can teach them, but <laughs> I'm excited about the next half of the season coming up. Me too. Mm -hmm. Long. Month and a half until we get it. Oh man, what am I gonna do? Just have to deal with the holidays until then. You should you should start watching DS9 during the break. I'll That's do right. that. That's gonna be my homework. Start at season three though. No, <laughs> no. I'm just kidding. I'm just start kidding. at season one, but see the the first episode's rough Way to get through. But just mm -hmm. push through the pain. Okay. Yeah, just, pain. just 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 force it out. It's like it's like having to hang out with a bunch of uh, bigots. You know, just hang out with them. It's like going to Christmas with your family. <gasps> I've already got to do that once this year. Actually, no, twice. Yeah, but, you know. <laughs> All right, well, thank you guys for coming and hanging out with us again. We hope that you had fun and we didn't talk too much. We could talk longer if you want. We could. We could talk about Trekmas. Trekmas, Trekmas. Is, coming up, is coming up soon. What is Trekmas? Christmas for Trekkies. <laughs> oh. oh, we'll get lots of toys. I'm in a presents. <laughs> presents! <laughs> Oh, I'm doing a. I'm in a group online too, uh, but uh, we're doing a. We're, we're doing a Star Trek uh, Secret Santa, and as much people out of the world, and we do a little website like that. We get onto, so that'll be a lot of fun. So, speaking of Trek, that's really cool. Very that's cool. That's a really cool thing to get into. Oh, yeah. okay, this was fun, y'all. Once again, Joe, thank you for letting us come over. Yes, thank you very much. We'll have to do this again. So, Molly, thank you for coming too. 
Thanks. You're a newbie, newbie Star Trek. Yeah, yeah thanks for giving, not learning about all this. Thanks so, for giving Star Trek a chance. What, do course. you think that you would go back and watch some of the older ones? Oh yeah, definitely. Do you think you're going to stick with Enterprise? I don't. Or go I was going to say maybe I'm not, not feeling. I'm not feeling Enterprise oh, okay. right now, but I can, feel, I can understand that. No, I think she needs to watch DS9 because I think the I rest really of us know. are in agreement that DS9 is the best. 100 percent best character development in all of Star Trek. It really I'll is. Start with that. Bye. We've had fun. <laughs> I've enjoyed it. We hope it. that you've had fun too. Thanks for hanging out with us, guys. We'll see you next time. You won't see us, but you'll see them. Yeah. No, I don't know. You might see them. You never know. At some point, maybe in the future. <laughs> Just, just share the video. I like make the wait. I like the roundtable discussion. I think we should do it again. <laughs> Definitely. We'll have to complete the circle next time. Bye. 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 Unicorn kisses and farts and all those good things. All of them. <laughs>